in this video we're going to talk about factoring. Okay. And factoring is just the process for undoing the distributive property. So if you remember back to the distributive property video, you had a number on the outside of something in parentheses like this, okay, and you distribute it in, and you get AB plus AC. Well, now we're taking AB plus AC, okay? We see that there's a common factor, A, in both of these terms, and so we're taking A out and bringing it back to what we originally started, A times B plus C. Okay? There are many different types of factoring, and I'm going to go through three examples of the different types of factoring there are. Okay? The most simplest one is to find what's called a least common or greatest common factor, and that's what this problem is right here. Okay? For each one of these things, the number, the x's, the y's, and the z's, there is a greatest common factor. Okay? So the, the greatest common thing amongst all of the, all the things in that category. So for instance, in the numbers here, We've got 8, 12, and 6. The greatest common factor for that is 2. It's the highest number you can divide out of those numbers. So our greatest common factor for the numbers is 2. Okay? If you go through the exponents, you're going to find the lowest numbered exponent for each letter. So in this case, x would be 1. For y, you'd get 2, so y squared. And then for z, you'd also get 1. So that's our common factor. Okay? We're going to take that out of all of this, right? That's what factoring is. We're taking something out of a long list of, of numbers, okay? And so we're going to get something left over in the parentheses, okay? So basically what you're going to do is take your greatest common factor you factored out, and you're going to divide it in to each value of your original thing. So we've got 8xy squared z, so divide that by this, and you'll get 4, and that's it. Okay, all the letters uh, divide away, so you get just ones for those. Okay, in the next part, you're going to get 6x squared y, because when you divide x to the third by x, you get x squared. You divide y to the third by y squared, you get y. And then for the last part, you're going to get 3, 6 divided by 2 is 3, x, z squared. So that would be the answer to our just greatest common factor problem. Okay, we factored out our greatest common factor, and we have some stuff left over afterwards. Okay. Our next example is where we're going to factor out of, out of something like this, 7x plus 7, okay, and then we're going to cancel something. Okay. So, for instance here, we can see that there's a 7 in both of these things. So I can take a 7 out of it just by dividing 7 into each of these terms, okay, and I end up getting 7 times x plus 1 over 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so you can cancel it out like this, and you're left with x plus 1, okay. When things are being divided by each other, okay, and they're the same, okay, that's basically saying 1, right? 3 over 3 is 1, well, if, for instance, you had x plus 1 over x plus 1, that's also 1. So you can get rid of those things. That's called canceling. Okay? Because the 1 kind of falls into the, falls away. Okay? The final example of factoring is what's called a trinomial. Okay? Trinomials are special because you can factor them in a different way. And we factor them by turning them into two of these factors here, an x plus something or an x minus something that when you multiply them together, you equal the original trinomial, okay? So to tr factor a trinomial, it's kind of like a puzzle, and the first thing you want to do is write out your parentheses like this. You're going to end up with at least two factors, okay? You're going to put x's in here, okay? Because the goal, right, is to get these factors so that they multiply back to this, okay? If you have an x squared term in your trinomial, you're going to need to multiply an x times an x, so you need the x's in there. Okay? After that, okay, you need to find factors of this back number that when added or subtracted equal the number in front of the middle number. Okay? So the factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Okay? 
And so we're going to try to use these factors to see if we can get them to come up to negative 1. Okay? There's no way for 1 and 6 to get to negative 1. Right? 1 minus 6 is 7, 6 minus 1 is 5. It's not going to work. But if you put 2 and 3 in there, you can put x plus 2 and x minus 3, 2x minus 3x equals negative x. Okay? So that's correctly factored. Okay? You can check yourself by foiling. Right? If you foil, you're going to first, outside, inside, last, this, these factors and see if you get it back. So x times x is x squared. X times negative 3 is negative 3x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. That's x squared minus x minus 6. Oh, I wrote a problem down wrong. That's embarrassing. So that's supposed to be a minus sign. Okay, and you'll end up getting minus 6. This is why you write out scripts, folks. Alright, in the second video, we're going to do it just a little bit faster. We're going to do the same thing. We need to uh, factor. So I have my setup like this. I'm going to factor 15 really quick. I get 1 and 15, 3 and 5. 3 and 5 are obviously going to be the numbers that are going to get me to negative 2. So I will do that. I'll make it plus 3 and minus 5. That will get 3x minus 5x to get negative 2x. All right, and then I can foil really quickly to make sure that I'm right. x times x is x squared, plus 3x, minus 5x, minus 15, which is x squared, minus 2x, minus 15. So as you can see, these factors are correct because they do get me back to my original trinomial. Okay? Those are our three main ways of factoring in this class. You're going to have the greatest common factoring factoring, okay? a similar type of greatest common factoring where you can cancel, and then trinomial. Okay, all of these things are, are easy to do with a little bit of practice. Okay, so once we start uh, going with them, we'll be just fine.